is good to be back in the house of the Lord, and we thank you for joining us today here at Gratefully Blessed Ministries, and uh, we pray that the Lord has kept you in good health and spirits as we go through this COVID-19 pandemic that we're experiencing. So our prayers go out to each and every one of you. Uh, we'd like to begin by saying Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. And it's a tremendous day for fathers. And if you are a father or you have a father, um, we want to honor them today. This is the day that we honor our fathers. But before we do that, I wanted to give you a little history of to the background of how Father Father's Day uh, celebration actually began. We do know that the Father's Day is a celebration honoring fathers and celebrating fatherhood, paternal bonds, and the influence of fathers in society. But the whole idea of Father's Day was conceived more than a century ago, more than a hundred years ago, by a young lady by the name of Sonora Dodd of Spokane, Washington. Now, Sonora Dodd was one day sitting in a Mother's Day celebration at church, celebrating Mother's Day, and she wanted a special day to honor her father, whose name was William Smart. And William Smart was a widowed Civil War veteran who was left to raise his six children on a farm. Its first celebration was in the Spokane YMCA on June 19th, 1910. In 1966, President Lyndon B. Johnson issued the first presidential proclamation honoring fathers designating the third Sunday in June as Father's Day. Six years later, the day was made a permanent national holiday when President Richard M. Nixon signed it into law in 1972. And brothers and sisters, here we are today. Happy Father's Day. The sermon titled today is Faithful Men Planted. And our scripture is Psalm number one, verse number one. This sermon, the original author of this sermon, Pastor Terry K. Anderson, of the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, preached this sermon so, so many years ago, and I was given the honor of preaching this sermon uh, last year on Father's Day. I was invited uh, by Pastor Jesus Sandoval uh, from the New Harvest Christian Fellowship Church here in San Diego, and the sermon was well received, and it, it's a profound sermon, and it is applicable today, even as it was then. So I wanted to take this opportunity on this Father's Day to share it with you. So if you have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to the book of Psalm, the book of Psalms, Psalm number one, at verse number one. And brothers and sisters, if you're able to stand, would you please stand for the reading and hearing of God's holy word, amen? Amen. And we will read, Psalm number one, verse number one.
Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God will last forever. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for this time together. We pray that you work in and through us to do your good will and good pleasure. May the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, your humble servant submits this prayer before your throne room of grace. And we thank you and ask it all in that name. And let the church say, Amen. You might be asking the question, where does a faithful man planted get his spiritual and physical strength from? I think I can say without fear of successful contradiction that one of the most beloved books in the Bible is the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is named Tehillim in Hebrew. There are no chapters in the Psalms. The Psalms are numbered because the entire book of Psalms is a book of music. It's the Hebrew hymn book. It's a book of songs, uh, hymns of praise and prayer unto the Lord. There are psalms of lament where they are in deep sorrow. And then there are imprecatory psalms where the psalmist is asking God to kill his enemies. I particularly like those psalms. And then there are psalms of praise and psalms of excitement where God has delivered them and they are glad. It's, it's, it's music and you can't really marshal an army without music. You can't move a people without music. But this, this sacred music of God's people is almost impolite to listen to them because their music is so close to their experience. But for a moment, let's just tip in and listen to some of the music they sang in their festivals and their feasts. The feasts of unleavened bread, the feast of tabernacles, the feasts of booths. They, they sang this music in their feasts, in their pilgrimages. Let's just follow along and listen to their music. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. That's beautiful music. Even people that don't go to church know this one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. 
Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's beautiful, beautiful music. I bet you know this one. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. That's beautiful, beautiful music. But this, this Psalm number one, the music of Psalm number one, especially verse number one, gives us the characteristics of a faithful man planted. Blessed is the man who does not walk, who does not stand, who does not sit. Look, look at that progression. He does not stand, he does not walk, he does not sit. If you walk with them, it won't be long before you stand with them. Look at these characteristics of this faithful man. He walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. When you read the word of God, it gives you the true characteristics of the man of God, a faithful man of God, and what he ought to look like. He is blessed if he does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Brothers and sisters, hear me. If you walk with them, it won't be long before you believe like them. Walking with them makes you believe like them. It's, 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 it's hard to get away from how you were raised. It's hard to get away from how you were brought up. My parents raised six children, three boys and three girls. And I was kind of in the middle. I had an older brother, an older sister, and I had a younger brother and two younger sisters. And my parents would always tell me uh, when I would leave the house, they said, don't, don't, don't get into anything uh, that could, could get you in trouble because uh, you, you could get into something and, and, and not be able to get out of it. Don't hang around with the wrong crowd. And I was out one day, and these guys in the neighborhood, they knew me, and they approached me and they said, Eddie, uh, come go with us. We're going to this man's house, and he has a lot of valuables at his house, and we're going to go there and separate him from his valuables. And I, I said to them, uh, what, what are you talking about? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna go with you to do that. And the before I could get that out of my mouth, one of the uh, guys that were with him said, uh, what's the matter, you scared? And I said, no, I'm not scared. I'm just, I'm just not going to go with you to do that. So I, I, I went on my way, and they went on their way, and I don't even know to this very day whether or not they went back to that man's house to rob him and separate him from his valuable. But brothers and sisters, my parents always told me, whenever my feet were quick to mischief, don't, don't hang around with the wrong crowd because you may get into something that you can't get out of. And one of my mentors, as I mentioned earlier, Pastor Terry K. Anderson of the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Houston, Texas, put it this way. He says, Lord, if you see my children going in a way 
that I did not raise them, catch them by the reins of their minds and turn them around before it's a day and a time too late. Mark death and judgment across their path and bid them no further to go that way. If you walk with them, if you get in their company too long, you're going to start to believe like them. Hear me, brothers and sisters. I don't care what anybody tells you. It matters what you believe. It truly matters what you believe. Now, there are some things that, that really don't matter to me. For example, what color the carpet is in the church. Uh, that don't really matter to me. Or what, what color suit you may wear on men's day, or whether it's black or white, or whether the corsage you wear is dead or alive. You know, that, that, that don't matter to me. And brothers and sisters, I mention these examples because churches have split over these foolish notions. But there are some things for me that are non-negotiable. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God without sin, I believe he was born of a virgin. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he rose from the grave. I believe he is seated at the right hand of God with power. And I believe he is coming back again. And those things for me are non-negotiable and it matters what you believe. Because what you believe separates Christianity from Eastern mysticism. It separates Christianity from impersonal idealism and evolutionary naturalism. It separates Christianity from all the other so-called religions of the world. Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord, and I believe that. And if you believe that, it's enough to save you. If you don't walk with them, you won't believe like them. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Because if you walk with them, it won't be long before you believe like them. Nor stands in the way of sinners. If you walk with them, you'll believe like them. And if you stand with them, you'll behave like them. If you walk with them, you'll believe like them. And if you stand with them, you'll behave like them. You'll behave like them. Your, your conduct says a whole lot about what you believe. Belief should always correspond with how you behave. What you believe dictates how you act. Brothers and sisters, those of us who are over the age of 50, can help me testify here. And, 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 and don't get offended, brothers and sisters, when I talk about old age. I don't know who said this getting old was a, a good idea. I'm going in old age kicking and screaming. I, I don't like nothing about getting old. There's nothing exciting to me about getting old. So stay young as long as you can because when you get up here where I am, you're looking for your car keys and they're in your hand. And they're, uh, uh, you're looking for your glasses and they're on your face. Or you walk into a room and you say, oh, what in the hell did I come in here for? Somebody ought to help me testify here. I, uh, I mentioned earlier uh, my mentor, uh, Pastor Terry K. Anderson, of the Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church uh, in Houston, Texas, and he had preached a sermon, and he, after the sermon, he went out to this restaurant to have a meal, and he went into this restaurant, and his server was a lovely young woman. His server was a lovely young woman. A lovely young woman. And he sat out and he ordered some tea and she bought him the tea and uh, he looked at her and she looked at him and she left and she came back and uh, she tried to pour him some more tea and he said, no, baby, I got it just the way I want it. Um, and she left and uh, 
he looked at her and she looked at him and she came back again and she told him, she said, you know, you're such a handsome man. Uh, the way your glasses uh, sit on your face and uh, your mustache and your gold teeth, you're just such a handsome man. And Pastor Terry Anderson said when she said that to him, immediately his head popped up and his chest stuck out and you know, he, he felt real good, but then he said the Holy Spirit spoke to him. And he said, I'm going to shuck this corn right down to the cob. And he, he said, he told her, you know, I'm not, I'm on three blood pressure medications, and I'm not going to allow you to put me in the hospital. Brothers and sisters, it's not about manhood. It's about God's integrity. It's not a question of manhood. It's a question of godly integrity. I have to live with myself, and so I want to be fit for myself to know. I want to be able, as days go by, always to look myself straight in the eye. I don't want to stand with the setting sun and hate myself for the things I've done. I don't want to keep on a closet shelf a lot of secrets about myself and fool myself as I come and go into thinking that nobody else will know. The kind of man I really am. I don't want to dress myself up in a sham. What you believe translates into how you behave. Because if you don't walk with them, you won't believe like them. And if you don't stand with them, you won't behave like them. But brothers and sisters, this last one. Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. If you don't walk with them, you won't believe like them nor stands in the way of sinners. If you don't stand with them, you won't behave like them, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, because if you sit with them, you belong to them. You believe like them, you behave like them, and if you sit with them, you belong to them. People ought to be able to tell the difference between a man who goes to church and a man who doesn't go to church. Your, your walk, your gait, your conversation, your attitude, your way of living ought to tell people, I don't belong to the world. The Lord says, come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Now, now that word separated doesn't mean better, it means different. I'm not better than them. I'm just different from them. Brothers and sisters, I, I try to live my life in a way that gives God glory. I try to live my life in a way that pleases Almighty God because when it's all over, he won't call me minister. He won't call me reverend. He won't call me pastor. He will say servant of God. Well done. If you don't walk with them, you won't believe like them. If you don't stand with them, you won't behave like them. And if you don't sit with them, you won't belong to them. Brothers and sisters, I've lived my life trying to do what the Bible says, walking not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standing in the way of sinners, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. I tried to walk upright. I tried not to stand with them because if you stand with them, it won't be long before you sit with them. Brothers and sisters, I want to share this story of Abraham and Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew and Abraham and Lot were about to part company because there was a falling out amongst their herdsmen. And Abraham said to Lot, let's not fall out. We have a common enemy in the land. We are brothers. 
Let's not have a disagreement among ourselves. Rather than fall out, you take the land you want, and what you leave, that will be my land. And Lot chose the high lands of Sodom and Gomorrah, and Abraham chose the lowlands of Mamre. And, and that disappoints Abraham for a while until God tells him, don't be discouraged about Lot choosing the highlands of Sodom and Gomorrah because pretty soon this town is about to go up in smoke. This land has been angelically tagged for demolition. It's going to go up in smoke in a minute. Don't worry about Lot in the highlands of Sodom and Gomorrah and you being in the lowlands of Mangre. The land that Lot is in is about to go up in smoke. And so Lot takes a lawn chair and sits downtown in the gate of Sodom and Gomorrah in the town that's about to go up in smoke because he walked with them, stood with them, and eventually sat with them. And when God gets ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he tells Abraham to tell Lot to come out of there with him and his family. And Lot takes his family and they are headed out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But Mrs. Lot had to have one more look. She had to see the club one more time. She had to see the bright lights one more time and she turned around and looked and she turned immediately into a pillar of salt. And historians say on that very spot where Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt is where the Dead Sea rests even until this day. And nothing lives in the Dead Sea because it's so salty. That's where Lot's wife was turned into a pillar of salt because if you walk with them, you'll start to believe like them. And if you stand with them, you'll start to behave like them. But if you sit with them, sooner or later, you'll belong to them. My brothers and sisters, there is something that I want you to know about me today. It is that I belong to the Lord. I am a child of God, and if anybody asks you who I am, tell them I'm a child of God because I know who Jesus is. Jesus is the son of God without sin, and he is the son of man with power. And I loudly proclaim that I love the Lord because he heard my cry. He pitted my groans as long as I live, and trouble rise, I will hasten unto his throne. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God until salvation. I'm not embarrassed to be a Christian. And I want everybody to know I'm on the Lord's side. He brought me from a mighty long way and as long as I live, I'm not going to walk with the ungodly. I'm not going to stand in the path of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful because if you walk with them, it won't be long before you believe like them. And if you stand with them, it won't be long before you behave like them. And if you sit with them, it won't be long before you belong to them. In conclusion to this Father's Day message entitled, Faithful Men Planted. During these COVID-19 pandemic times, a man's faith is being severely tested. That is why a godly man must be a faithful man planted. The seeds that you have planted in this 2020 pandemic will long be remembered by not only your children, but all children as well. Faithful men, how will you apply this message to your life today? What is it that you want your children, grandchildren, and even great-grandchildren to know about the way that you lived your life? Will you leave a spiritual legacy for all children to see? What is it that you loudly proclaim, and whose side are you on? 
Listen, brothers. We have to walk with God. We have to walk with Jesus because if you walk with Jesus, you'll believe like Jesus. If you stand with Jesus, you'll behave like Jesus. And if you sit with Jesus, you'll belong to Jesus. And brothers, if you do these things, God will bless you to become the fathers that he has called you to be. Amen. Amen. I hope you got something out of the word of the Lord on this Father's Day, June 21st, 2020. God bless you. We want to thank each and every one of you for listening and taking the time out of your day to listen and watch this sermon again. I hope you got something out of it. We pray our richest blessings upon you. And if there is anyone who has not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I encourage you to do it today. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 and 10 says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. I would like to encourage each and every one of you to go to our website so that we can help you navigate through accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior at gratefullyblessedministries.com. And also you can view all the sermons or even submit a prayer request. And we want to take this opportunity to thank you for your generous donations for the building of God's kingdom here at Gratefully Blessed Ministries. And now for the benediction. Dear Heavenly Father, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can imagine or even think. May the Lord bless you. May he keep his hedge of protection around you during this COVID-19 pandemic. May his countenance and his face continue to smile and shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you, grant you favor, and show you peace. May he continue to lift you up and send you out to complete the work he has started in you in accordance with Philippians 1 and 6. Lord, dismiss us from this place, but never from your awesome sight. We thank you for another opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, and let the people of God say, Amen. Let's give the God, our God, a hand praise. Amen.